live from downtown San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit 2018, brought to you by IBM. We're back in San Francisco, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, and we're here covering exclusive coverage of IBM's Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit. This is a summit, as I said, they bookend at each coast, San Francisco and Boston, intimate. A lot of senior practitioners, chief data officers, um, data folks, people who love data. Caitlin Halfordy is back. She's the client engagement executive in the chief data officer office at IBM. Great. And Alan Crane, assistant vice president at USAA. Thank you. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks Thank for coming on. Thanks All for right. having us. You're welcome. Um, well, good day today. As I said, a very intimate crowd. Um, you're here as a sort of de facto CDO, learning, sharing, connecting with peers. Set up your role, Alan. Tell us about that. Well, at USA, we've got a distributed uh, data and analytics organization where we have centralized functions in our hub, and then each of the lines of business have their own data offices. And I happen to have responsibility for all the different ways that our members interact with us. So about 100 million phone calls a year, about a couple billion uh, internet and digital sessions a year. Um, most of that is on mobile. And uh, always looking at the ways that we can uh, give back time to our membership as well as our customer service reps, who we call our member service reps, uh, so that they can serve our members better. The faster and more predictive we can be with uh, being able to understand our members better and prompt our MSRs with the right information to serve them, then the more they can get onto the actual value of that conversation. A lot of data. So one of the things that Inderpal had talked about, the very first time I met him in, in Boston, he said, well, he talked about the five pillars, and the first one was, you have to understand as a CDO how your organization gets value out mm -hmm. of data. Mm -hmm. He said that could be direct monetization or mm -hmm. I guess increased revenue, cut cost, mm -hmm. right? That's value. Right. right? That's right. So that's a that's, right. that's a starting point. Right. Yeah. And and so how did you start? <laughs> right. Well, Actually, it was the internal monetization. So first off, I want to say, USA never sells any of our member data. So we don't think of monetization in that framework. Right. But we do think of it in terms of, how do we give something that's even more precious than money back to our company and to our uh, members and the MSRs? And that is really that gift of time by removing friction from the system. We've been able to reduce calls per member uh, through digitization activities and reduced transfers and reduced misdirects by over 10% every year. We're doing work with AI and machine learning to be able to better anticipate what the member is calling about so that we can get them to the right place at the right time to the right set of member uh, service representatives. And so all these things have resulted in not just time savings, but obviously that translates directly to bottom line savings but at the end of the day, it's about member increasing that member service level, increasing your responsiveness, increasing the speed that you're answering the phone, and ultimately increasing that member satisfaction. Yeah, customer satisfaction, lowers churn rates. That, that, that's a form of monetization. It's a hard, Absolutely. It's hard dollars to the, Absolutely. to the CFO, right? Yeah. Right. All right, let's talk about the, the role of the CDO. This is something right. we, talked, we touched on, on earlier. Yes. Um, we're bringing it home here, the yes. la last segment. Um, where are we at? with the role of the CDO. It was sort of you know, isolated in, in for years in, in regulated industries. Correct. Permeated to you know, mainstream organizations. Correct. Um, many of those mainstream organizations can move faster because they're not regulated, but so we sort of reach parity between the regulated and the unregulated, and what do you discern there in terms of patterns and, 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 and states of innovation? Sure, I, I think when we you know, kicked off these summits in 2014, many of our CDOs came from CIO type organization, yeah, defensive right. posture, you know, king of the data warehouse that we joke about. Mm -hmm. And now we've, and you know, analyst reports at that time were saying, you know, maybe 20% of large organizations were investing in a CDO or similar yeah, individual yeah. responsible for enterprise data. And now we see analyst reports coming out to say upwards of, you know, 85, even 90% of organizations are investing right. in, you know, someone responsible for that role, often, you know, CDO mm -hmm. type. Um, 
um, at the, in my opening remarks this morning, I polled the room to say, you know, who's here for the, for the first time? And it was interesting, you know, 69, 70% of attendees are joining us for the first time. And I went back, okay, who's been here last year, year before? And I said, who is here from the beginning? 2014 with us, and Alan is one of the individuals who's been with us. And, yeah. and as much as, as topics have changed and the role has grown and the purview and scope of responsibilities, some topics have remained, our, our attendees tell us, they're still important top of mind. And data monetization is, is one of those. So right. we always have a panel on data monetization. And we've had some good discussions recently that the idea of it's just the external resell or something to do with you know selling data externally is one view, but really driving that internal yeah. value and the ways you, you know, drive out those efficiencies is, a, is another perspective on it. So fortunate yeah. to have Alan well, we've, here. We've been able to, for that very reason, we've been able to grow our team from uh, about six or seven people five years ago to well over 100 people that's focused on how we take uh, inefficiency out of the system. And, and those, you know, that, that mere 10% when you're uh, call, call, call for member reduction, when you were talk, taking, a, you know, 30 million calls in the bank, you know, that's, that's real dollars, right? right? Three million calls out of the system that right. um, you can monetize like that. So it's real value that the, the company sees in us and, and I think that in, in a sense is really how you want to be growing as a data organization because people see value in you, willing to give you more, and then you start getting into those interesting conversations. If I gave you more people, you know, could you get me more results? Mm. Let's talk about digital transformation and how it relates to all this. So you've got, presumably you've got a top-down initiative. The yeah. CEO says, he or she says, okay, this is important, we got to do it. Boom, here's the North Star. Yeah. Let's go. What's the right regime that you're seeing? Obviously you got to have the executive buy-in. You got the chief data officer, you have the chief digital officer, the chief operating officer, the CFO is always going to be there, yeah. making sure things are on track. But how are you seeing that whole thing shake out, at least in your organization? I think. One thing that we've been seeing is that digital or digital digitization, um, you know, really is not about, or the digital transformation is not about just going only digital. It's how does all this work together? Mm -hmm. It can't just be an additive function where you're still taking just as many calls, you're, you know, and so forth. But it's it's got to be something that that experience online has got to do something that's transformative in your organization. So we really look at. Uh, the, the member all the way through that whole ecosystem and not just through the digital lens. And that's really where um, teams like ours have really been able to stitch together the, the member experience across all their channels that they're interacting with us, whether that's the marketing channels or the um, digital channels or the call channel so that uh, we can better understand that experience. But it's certainly a complementary one and not it can't just be an additive one. What if we could talk about complacency in terms of digital transformation. Uh, I talk to a lot of companies and I just don't, th th there's discussion about digital, but there's, you talk to a lot of people who say, well, we're doing fine. Yeah. Um, really, you know, maybe not in our industry. It, mm -hmm. Insurance is one that hasn't been highly disrupted. Financial services, things like aerospace. Mm -hmm. I'll be retired by the time <laughs> this all happens. I mean, that's just true, right? And so, and it's probably accurate. So, are you seeing a sense of complacency or are you seeing a sense of urgency or sort of mix or both? What are you seeing, Caitlin? Well, it's interesting and, and people may not be aware, but you know, I'm constantly polling the, our attendees to ask yeah. what are top of mind topics? What are you struggling with? Where are you seeing you know, successes? And digital was one that came up for this particular session, which is why tomorrow's keynote, we have our chief digital officer um, giving uh, the morning keynote to show how our data office and digital office are partnering to mm -hmm. drive transformation internally. Yeah. So at least from for our perspective and an internal um, side of it, we have a, a priority initiative, our cognitive sales advisor, mm -hmm. and it's essentially intended to bring in disparate parts of customer data yeah. obtained through many different channels, all the ways that they engage with us, you know, yeah. online and other, and then um, deliver it through, you know, sales advisor app that empowers our digital sellers to, to you know, better meet their revenue mm -hmm. targets and mm -hmm. impact and develop uh, more of a, you know, a quality client relationship and, and improve that customer experience. So mm -hmm. internally, at least, it's been interesting to see one of our strongest partnerships in terms of business unit has been our data and digital office. Yeah. And they say, look, the quality of the data is at the core. You then enable our digital sellers and 
our clients benefit it's That's for right. a better client experience well about a year ago we actually changed the organization to align the data office with the digital office and so that reports to our uh, executive council uh, yeah. level so their peers you know that report into the same organization to ensure that those strategies are connected yeah so the as Caitlin was saying the the, the chief data officer kind of emerged from a defensive posture, compliance, governance, data quality. Mm -hmm. um, the chief digital officer kind of knew, mm -hmm. um, oftentimes associated with, with marketing, mm -hmm. um, more of an external perhaps facing um, role, not always. Uh, but so, uh, do, you, do you see, and then the CIO, it would say, well wait a minute, data, it's the CIO's job, but of course the CIO, she's too busy, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> trying trying to keep the lights on and make everything work. So, uh, where does the technology organization fit? Well, all that's together. Um, mm -hmm. So, when we brought all those things together as, at the organizational level, digital, data, and technology are all together, and even design, And actually. so, you, you guys are all peers, reporting yeah. into the executive committee, essentially, is that right? Yes, our data, technology, and design, and digital office are all peers reporting into the same executive level, and, leader. And, and then, the other, one of the other pillars that Interpol talks, about, Interpol talks about is the relationship with the line of business. Mm -hmm. So, how is that connective tissue you know, created? Well, being on the, the side that is responsible for how all of our members interact, my organization touches every product, every line of business, every channel that our members are, are interacting with. And so our data is actually shared across the organization. So right now, really my focus is to make sure that that data is as accessible as it can be across our enterprise partners. It's as uh, democratized as it can be. Um, it's as high as, as high as quality. And then things that we're doing around machine learning and AI can be enabled and plugged in to from all those different lines of business. What does success look like? in your organization? How do you know you're doing well? And I mean, obviously dropping money to the bottom line, um, but how are you guys measuring yourselves and, and setting objectives and, and what's your North Star? I think, uh, you know, success for me is when you're doing a good job to the point that people say that, that, that question, you know, could you do more if I gave you more? Um, that, that to me is the ultimate mm -hmm. validation. It's how we grew as an organization. It's how we, um, uh, you know, we don't have to play that justification game when people are already coming to the table saying, you're doing great work, how can, how can you do more great work? Hmm. So, what's next for these summits? Are you guys doing do in Boston again in the fall, is that right? You're we are, doing we that? are, and um, you know, fall of last year we released the blueprint, and right. the intent was to say, hey, here's the reflection of our 18 months internal journey, as well as all of our client interactions and their feedback, and we said, we're coming back in the spring, and we're showing you the detail of how we've really built out these internal is, platforms. Yeah. So we released our, our hybrid on-prem on cloud showcase today, which was great. And to the level of specificity that shows you know, the, the product solutions, what we're using, the flash storage, the, um, uh, some of the AI components of that machine the learning models. The cognitive systems component of that. Exactly, yeah. and then our vision to your question to the fall, is coming back with the public cloud showcases. Oh, okay. So we're already internally doing work on our public cloud, um, in particular with respect to our, our backup, some of our client, uh, very sensitive client data, as well as some initial deep learning models. So those are the three pieces we're doing on public cloud internally. Mm -hmm. And just as we made the commitment to come back and unveil and show those details, we want to come back in the fall and show a variety of public cloud showcases where we're, we're doing this work. and then. Hopefully, as you know, we'll continue to partner and say, hey, here's how we're doing it. We'd love to see how you're doing it. Let's share some best practices, accelerate, you know, build these capabilities. And I'll say the biz to your business benefit question, what we found is once we've built that platform, we call it you know, mm -hmm. internally a one IBM architecture out our platform, we can then drive critical initiatives for the enterprise. So for us, GDPR, you know, we own delivery of GDPR readiness across the IBM corporation, mm -hmm. working with you know, senior executives and all of our lines of business to make sure we get there. Um, but you know, now we've got the responsibility to drive out initiatives like that cross business unit to your question on you know, partnerships. And the evolution of this event seems to be it's kind of a lot of evangelism early on and now it's yeah. really practical sort of sharing, um, like you say, the blueprint, how to apply yes. it. You know, a lot of people asking questions, how do I, you know, there's different levels of maturity. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now you guys back tomorrow, you got a, you got a panel. You guys are doing a panel on data monetization. We're doing a panel on data monetization tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, and then you got Bob Lord and Interpol talking about that. It's a perfect you know, juxtaposition and teamwork of those two 
two major roles. And this is the first time we've really showcased the data digital partnership and connection. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited, you know, want to appeal to the developer viewpoint of this. So I think it'll be a great conversation about, you know, data at the core, driving digital transformation. That's and right. then, as you said, you know, our data monetization panel, both, you know, external efforts as well as a lot of the internal value that we're all, that we're all driving. So I think that'll mm -hmm. be a, a great session tomorrow. Well, and yeah. it's important because it was a lot of confusing and, uh, and still is a lot of confusion about those roles. And you made your point early today is, look, there's a big organizational issue you have to deal with, particularly around data silos, my data. Um, I presume you guys have are, are attacking that challenge. Yes, right? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, still, uh, <laughs> still it's, attacking. It's an ongoing yeah. thing, no, but absolutely. I think we're getting a lot better at it. I think the, but it's, you know, but you've, you've got to lean in because if it's not internal, it's some of the external challenges around. Now we're picking cloud vendors and so forth. So it was, you you know, 10 years ago, we were we had our own silos in our own warehouses, um, if we had a warehouse, and yeah. then we were kind of moving into our own silos in our own databases. Um, and then as we democratized that, that we, we, we solved one problem, but now we're, our data is so big and our compute needs are so large that we have no choice but to get more external into a cloud. So it, you have to lean in because everything is changing at such a rapid rate. And it requires leadership. Yeah. Right? I mean, Absolutely. the whole digital data really requires you know, excellent leadership, a vision. Uh, IBM's catalyzing a lot of that conversation. So congratulations yeah. on getting this going. Last last thoughts. Oh, I would just say, uh, you know, we were joking that 2014, the first couple of summits, small yeah. group, maybe 20, 30 participants, mm -hmm. figuring out how to best organize from a structural perspective, you know, set up the office, what mm -hmm. sort of outcomes, metrics are we going to measure against? And those things I think are will continue sure. um, to be, you know, topics of discussion. But now we see we've got about, you know, 500 data leaders that are tracking our journey and that are involved mm -hmm. and engaged with us. Um, we've done a lot in North America. We're starting to do more outside the geographies as well, which is great to see. So um, I just have to say, I, I think it's interesting to see the topics that continue to be of interest, the governance, the data monetization, and then the new areas around you know, AI, and machine science. learning, data science, yeah. empowering mm -hmm. developers, the DevOps delivery, how are we going to you know, deliver that type of training. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really exciting to see the community grow and all the best practices leveraged and look forward to continuing to do that more of that this year as well. Alan, you obviously get a lot of value out of these events. You're here at the first one, you're here, you're here today in 2000, <laughs> 2018. Yes. What your thoughts? On I think the first one, we were all trying to figure out you know, who we are, what are we, what's our role, and it varied from I'm an individual contributor, data evangelist in the organization to you know, I'm, over, I'm king of the warehouse kind <laughs> right, of thing. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and largely from that defensive standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I think today you see a lot more people that are leaning in, um, leading data science teams, leading um, the, the future of where the organizations are, are going to be going. And um, yeah, people are, these are, this is really where the center of a lot of organizations are starting to pivot and look and see, you know, where is the future and how does data become the leading edge of where the organization is going. So it's pretty cool to be a part of a community like this that's uh, evolving that way, mm -hmm. but then also being able to have that uh, at, a, at a local level within your own organization. Well, another big takeaway for me is the USA, the USAA example shows that this can pay for itself. I mean, you grow your organization from a handful of people to 100 yeah. plus uh -huh. individuals driving value. Um, so it makes it easier to justify when you can you know, demonstrate a business case. Well guys, thanks very much for helping me wrap here. Absolutely. Really appreciate you having us here. It's been, Thank uh, you. been a great event. Always a pleasure, hopefully we'll see you in the fall. Sounds All good, right. thank you so much. All right, thanks for everybody for, for watching. We're out, this is theCUBE from IBM CDO Summit. Check out thecube.net for all the videos, siliconangle.com for all the news, uh, summaries of this event, and wikibon.com for all the research. We'll see you next time.